Here's an example that looks something like a tether ball. I'm imagining a ball with a string tied to its center that's hanging down from a pole. Now the ball doesn't keep on falling because the string prevents it from doing so, and it doesn't uh, start uh, oscillating like a pendulum because the pole is sitting right there and it's pushing back on the ball. So this thing is in complete equilibrium. It won't move and we are able to solve for everything now because we know that it's the tension of the string and the, and the support of that pole that's keeping it from moving. And we'll ask, in fact, what's the tension of the string? So we have a couple of equilibrium equations. First of all, we have the sum of the forces in the vertical direction will equal zero. The vertical direction acting on that ball, there are two forces. There's the tension of the string, which actually points off to the, dire you know, off to the side, so that's going to be T sine theta is the vertical component of that force. And there's gravity pulling straight down, so that's minus mg. The sum of those two forces has to equal zero. There's also the sum of the forces in the x direction. This thing is not moving horizontally either. That's uh, the normal force pushing back to the right from the, the pole, and the tension of the string pulling over to the left. So that's going to be minus cosine t cosine theta. So that's still not enough information. We, we don't have everything we need yet because we have two equations and uh, and three unknowns here. Then we have the sum of the torques. So this, the torques has to equal zero. Now if I think about that ball as being possibly pivoting around, it could you know, swing back and forth like a pendulum, there are a couple things preventing it from doing so. First of all, uh, there's the torque, well there, there are a couple of torques acting on it and the sum of the two of them uh, being zero prevents it from doing so. So there's a torque that's coming uh, that's from gravity pulling straight down at a distance r away from the pivot point. So that's uh, m, little mg times r. Normally we say that um, that it's you know, r sine theta r sine theta because it's a cross product. But this capital R right here happens to be the distance between um, the, the center of the ball and the wall and the pole. So it's really the length of that radial vector along the length of the string times the sine of uh, this, the, the, the opposite side of that. So it's the sine of that, this angle up here. There's another torque coming from the normal force pointing off to the right, acting at a distance L away from the pivot, pivot point. So the sum of those two torques has to equal zero. From the first equation, we have T sine theta is mg. And from the second equation, we have T cosine theta is the normal force. And we know from some easy geometry the tangent of this angle theta is L over R. And so from these three equations we have mg times the ratio R over L has to equal the normal force. And from, again from geometry we know that the cosine of the angle is going to equal the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's R over the square root of R squared plus L squared. And now we can write out a solution that the tension of the string has to equal the normal force over cosine theta, or it equals mg times the ratio r over l times the square root of r squared over l squared over r. So let's simplify just a little bit. It equals mg times the square root of 1 plus the ra ratio square root of r squared over l squared. So as r gets really, really small, notice that this expression just inside the square root goes to 1, and the tension just becomes mg. In other words, it's like a ball hanging straight down. 